Welcome back to the Fem Health Channel. Today I am talking with Dr. Kimberly Thornton. She is a reproductive endocrinologist and infertility specialist with RMA of New York. She has been on our channel multiple times before, educating all about fertility and pregnancy. And today she's going to talk to us about ICSI, often called ICSI. And if you are someone who has been trying to conceive, you may have heard this term before. So welcome, Dr. Thornton. And what can you tell us about ICSI? So ICSI stands for intracytoplasmic sperm injection. So an IVF, after we extract the eggs, um, they, you know, we need to fertilize them with sperm. And so conventional or traditional IVF is where the eggs are sort of put in a dish with a bunch of sperm and we kind of see what happens um, and, and let the sperm fertilize in a more natural approach. ICSI is where an embryologist will comb through the sperm, they examine it under the microscope, they pick out the normal shaped sperms with the best forward progressive motility. They actually inject one sperm directly into each egg. Um, so we know when there are abnormalities with sperm, so let's say a partner has low sperm count or poor morphology or poor motility, we see much higher fertilization rates when we do ICSI versus conventional. And some, if some you know, partners can have such severe abnormality that ICSI is really going to be like the only viable option um, for conception. I would say most patients doing IVF nowadays actually do do ICSI because so many people do what we call PGT testing, which is pre-implantation genetic testing, uh, where we can um, test an embryo by taking some cells from uh, the outside of the embryo to see if there's any spontaneous genetic abnormalities, things like Down syndrome. And so ICSI is often used with when we do that PGT testing. Um, XD is also often recommended as the fertilization option of choice for when people are using frozen eggs because there's some concern about when they are frozen, the outer portion of the egg may be a little bit harder and it might be in conventional regular insemination may be a little bit more difficult. Uh, and then there are certain other situations. Um, we use ICSI if somebody has a history of uh, poor fertilization in the past from conventional insemination, even with normal sperm parameter. Um, mix, some people use it for unexplained infertility and with the thoughts of maybe there is a fertilization factor, but it, it is something commonly used in our, our laboratory and it, it's really just based on how the egg will be fertilized. It seems to me that ICSI is something that almost everybody would want. Is cost a factor or why wouldn't everyone choose to do it? So ICSI does come with usually extra cost. Um, it, it requires an embryologist to spend time going through sperm, so it takes more time in the laboratory. With that, it you know requires more staffing, so there is definitely always a higher cost associated with that. Um, there has always been some concern if, if there is slightly higher birth defects with ICSI. Um, it's very low overall. Birth defects with IVF is about 2%. Um, we do, in general, see higher birth defect rates with male factor infertility, and that's the number one reason traditionally when ICSI has been used. So it's hard to really extrapolate if it's anything actually related to ICSI versus we just see that higher with male factor fertility. But those, I would say, are some of the, I guess, pros, pros and cons against it. But I would say um, as IVF is evolving, it is becoming something that I would say majority of people are using um, overall. You know, we don't see huge, you know, issues or abnormalities with children being born with ICSI overall rates of any sort of issue are, are very low. And it, it is used for many reasons besides male factor and fertility nowadays. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Well, Dr. Thornton, that was super informative. Thank you so much for being here and we look forward to chatting you. Thank you, Dr. Thornton. That was very informative. We look forward to chatting with you in the future on other topics related to fertility and pregnancy. Thanks for being here.